Hello everybody and welcome back. We're just picking up roughly where we left off uh, from the previous video. Here we're in problem 15.1b. In the first video, we spent probably a good half an hour or so filling out this partial Excel output for this multiple regression model that relates a few variables here. We have rainfall, we have uh, density of seed dispersion, temperature, and an index measuring the quality of fertilizer being used to predict wheat yield. So an agricultural model. So we've filled everything out. Now we've got our results. So here we're gonna go through now and we'll, well, we'll finish up part A because we in fact still have to write our estimated regression equation. And then we'll go through parts B, C, D. And then I think I'll have a separate video for this additional discussion. We're gonna have a little talk about a problem that appears to exist in this model. So we'll talk about that uh, in a separate video. So let's just jump into it. So here we're looking at, again, we've got this estimated regression equation, shows wheat yield as a function of rainfall, seed dispersion, temperature, and fertilizer quality. So after going through all of this, we have our estimated equation that gives us these coefficients. So if we write this out, I have my intercept is 1056.63 plus 32.29 rain plus 6.74 seeds plus 1547 fertilizer plus, nope, minus 9.06 temperature. Okay, so we've got our estimated regression equation. Our next step here, actually, we're gonna interpret that R square. So if I come up here, I can see that R square is 0.92. There's different ways that students tend to word their interpretation. Some ways are perhaps a little better than others. We might want to say, you know, our model explains 92% of the variation in the dependent variable. That's true, but it's very vague. So students might be inclined to say, well, okay, our independent variables explain 92% of the variation in our dependent variable. Okay, well, that's fine too. But what are your variables? What, what are you talking about? So I always encourage my students to, to, to interpret these numbers in the, the most specific context of the problem as possible. So our independent variables, well, what are they? The amount of rain that we get, the density of seeds that we disperse, the quality of the fertilizer and the temperature together capture 92% of the variation in wheat yield. So now there's no ambiguity in what I'm talking about, right? I'm describing very explicitly all of those variables. So that's how I would interpret here the R squared. Now let's go through our coefficients and their confidence interval estimates. So let's look at rain. So I have a coefficient of 32.29. Before I can interpret these, I, I need to remind myself what their units of measurement are because these coefficients and the intervals, these are estimates of the marginal effect of a one unit change in that independent variable. What is the effect it has on the dependent? Well, I need to know what those units are. What is a one unit change? So if I come up here and I look at rainfall, I see, oh, okay, rainfall, that's measured in inches. So a one unit change in rainfall is an additional inch of rain. What effect does that have on the dependent variable? Well, what are our units of measurement of the dependent? Okay, wheat yield is measured in pounds. So with that information, now I can look at that coefficient and I can say, okay, for each additional inch of rain, because again, I always think in terms of positive changes, when I'm thinking of a marginal effect, I always think of an additional. 
just because it's easier for me to interpret positive changes than a negative change. It's easier to word. So for each additional inch of rain that we receive, that contributes, this is an increase, so that increases average wheat yield by 32.29 pounds. So each additional inch of rain increases wheat yield by 32.29 pounds on average, right? These are point estimates of an average. When we look at, well, let's look at the, the um, confidence interval. So I'm 95% confident confidence that the effect of an additional inch of rain on wheat yield is to either decrease wheat yield by 44.84 pounds up to an increase of 109.42 pounds. So there I've got this confidence interval, the effect of one additional inch of rain, I'm 95% confident that that'll either decrease yield by as much as 44.84 pounds or increase yield by 109.42 pounds. So what, what do we see here? Well, I've got that hypothesized value, right? If we're doing the test, which of course is what we're gonna do in part D, well, we can talk about that a little bit here too, because we know the hypothesized value for those tests is zero. Is that parameter statistically different from zero or not? And so I see that hypothesized value exists within that interval. That certainly corresponds with a large p-value. So just right here, just upon interpreting that, that interval, I know that rainfall here is not found to be statistically significant. But we have provided our interpretation of those estimates nonetheless. Moving on, seeds. So now I'm looking at 6.74 seeds. Remember, this is a number of seeds per square inch. Yes. So for each additional seed per square inch, pretty small unit of measure, each additional seed per square inch increases average wheat yield by 6.74 pounds. That's a huge effect from one more seed per square inch, but it is what it is. So each additional seed per square inch increases average wheat yield, wheat yield by 6.74 pounds. If we look at the interval, I'm 95% confident that each additional seed per inch will increase average wheat yield by between 2.3 and 11.2 pounds. I'm rounding those decimals a little bit. I'm 95% confident that each additional seed per square inch increases average wheat yield by between 2.3 and 11.2 pounds. Fertilizer, point estimate. What is our, our measurement, our units? This is an index. So for each additional point on this fertilizer quality index, each additional point of, a, of quality increases, again, because it's positive, increases average wheat yield by 15.47 pounds. Okay, you kind of get the hang of it, right? You see kind of the pattern of how we interpret these. Now we're looking at temperature. Temperature is measured in degrees Fahrenheit, and we have a negative coefficient. So for each additional degree Fahrenheit that it is warmer, for each additional degree Fahrenheit, here we see average wheat yield decreases by 9.1 pounds. And again, I'm rounding those decimals. So each additional degree Fahrenheit warmer contributes to a decrease in wheat yield of about 9.1 pounds. Okay, I'm 95% confident that each additional degree Fahrenheit warmer that it is will impact wheat yield by either decreasing it by 64.52 pounds and potentially increasing it by as much as 56.39. So I'm 95% confident that the impact of an additional degree Fahrenheit 
on wheat yield will either decrease wheat yield by as much as 64 and a half pounds or increase it by as much as 46.4 pounds. So once more, I see that I'm crossing that zero threshold. And that is again consistent with that large p-value. So when we go into part D, interpret the p-values, well, we've already done a little bit of that in our interpretation of the intervals. What I would do here for this type of a problem, if this is on an exam, again, I, I try to avoid going through every single one of these, especially on an exam. You might have time constraints and, and that can be very tedious. You don't want to be spending time writing this null and alternative hypotheses. You know, here I would have it four or five times when really they're all the same for all of those t-tests. So I just say, you know, an i is equal to here 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So again, I'm, I'm not too concerned about the statistical significance of the intercept. In some models, that will be more relevant, that might be more important to your model. But for now, I'm more concerned about the the significance of those independent variables because that tells us whether or not that variable is related to your dependent variable, whether or not there's a correlation between those two variables. Correlation, right? We're not, there's no causation here. These are measures of correlation. So if I go through, okay, my intercept is not zero. Well, that's fine. Rain. Well, Rain is not statistically significant. Here, I do not reject the null hypothesis. I do not have evidence to show that the amount of rainfall is statistically significant. And that's evident both in the p-value and in the confidence interval. For seeds, absolutely. Seeds and fertilizer are both found to be statistically significant. So those both contribute in a, in a statistically significant manner to explaining the variation in our wheat yield. And of course, we've already mentioned that temperature also is found to be not statistically significant, meaning that coefficient is not statistically different from zero. Now again, just to avoid confusing, on an exam, what I would generally do and what is generally accepted would be to group your conclusions into here's the ones that I reject, here's the ones that I do not reject. So I would say, you know, we have evidence to reject the null hypotheses for the test on seeds and fertilizer, which means, right, and then provide the interpretation that I've just given. I have insufficient evidence to reject the null hypotheses for the coefficient of rain and temperature, and then go on to say what that means, as I've already done. Okay, so you can just lump those. Here's the ones that are significant. Here's the ones that are not significant. Finally, the test for overall model significance. So that, my goodness, I want the highlighter. There we go. So that is uh, our F test, which I can see up here. So, so that test, I'll just squeeze it in here, is testing to see whether or not our model and the alternative, not all are zero, whether our model is statistically significant or not. And here I have a p-value of zero. We have pretty strong evidence here to reject the null hypotheses. Certainly not all of them are zero. So taken together, the amount of rain the density of seed dispersion, the temperature, and the quality of the fertilizer taken together, those four variables capture a statistically significant amount of the variation in our dependent variable. Okay, so that's it for those A, B, C, and D. Part E, I'm going to start a separate video for Part E because there's maybe something that we can do to this model to improve on this model. And I'll give you a little bit of a clue. It has something to do with this thing called multicollinearity. I'll leave it at that and I'll come back in, in just a few moments with another video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.